Hi friends. It is Wednesday, the 31st of March. Jeez Louise. Um, after class last night, I was highly embarrassed and disappointed that I could not remember my patient care reports. So I am going to spend the next half hour or so studying my patient, patient care reports again, because it's one of the first things I learned. It gets very frustrating when you forget to go back and revisit that stuff. So sitting in front of my instructor yesterday, trying to remember what OPQRST means, and you're like, oh, uh, onset, P, uh, provocation, what brought it on? And then you can't remember, or you get to sample history, S-A-M-P-L-E, and you gotta remember that is symptoms, allergies, medications, and those are the only ones I remember. Yeah, so I'm gonna spend today studying. It's going to be a boring day. But I, I mean, if you want to know this stuff, I'll teach you. So the first part of the patient care report is this. You always start with PPE. And it's funny because now the whole world knows what that means. Appropriate PEE, no matter what. It's always a gloves, set of gloves and a mask. But often it is eye shield, sometimes face shield, sometimes full gown, sometimes bunny suit. Uh, it's crazy. So PPE, number one, when you roll up onto a scene every single time. Next, scene safety. You have to say, um, okay, if you're on a road, where do I park my rig so that we're all protected? If someone's going to hit something, it needs to be the rig and not us or the patients or the other helpers. So uh, that was scene safety. Next is MOI or NOI. And MOI is mechanism of injury. And if it's car crash, it's, you know, rollover or head on or MVO or motor vehicle. Oh, MVI, motor vehicle incident. So if it's NOI, nature of illness, excuse me, so much gas still from the surgery. Um, not the surgery for bile and adjustments. Uh, let's see. Nature of illness would be like the scenario I got last night. Like I roll up to a scene of an 84, 84 year old woman sitting in her recliner, laid back with her feet up with her hand on her chest. And the reason for the call is chest pain. So you have to go through all of these steps. So nature of illness would be chest pain. And then number of patients. So is there one patient or more? Obviously, if there's more than one patient, you probably need backup. So you call for backup at that point. And then number six is a, is there a C-spine injury? You assess that right away because uh, right when you do, um, you, okay. So it's PPE, scene safety, MOI or NOI. Uh, so what's going on? Do you need backup? the number of patients, and is there a C-spine injury? And if there is, you need to treat with a backboard and a neck brace immediately. So that's only the first five steps, and there's like 17 steps. So I'm gonna be studying. Yeah, yeah. So let's go over this again so that I can quiz myself. Number one, PPE, always appropriate PPE for the situation and what it calls for. Number two, mechanisms, mechanism of injury. If it's a trauma, what caused the injury? Nature of illness. If it's medical, if it's a medical call, what is the nature of the illness of the, of the patient? Number three, Scene safety. Is the scene safe for me and my partner and anyone else involved? And how can I make it more safe? Scene safety. How many patients are there? Number of patients. And do we need backup? If there's more than the number of patients that me and my partner can handle, we need to call for another rig and backup. Appropriate backup. If we need paramedic or if we need advanced life support, we should be calling that as well. Uh, is there a C-spine injury? Is there a neck injury that could cause permanent or even temporary damage? We need to check and protect that C-spine as quickly as possible. Next, primary impressions. General impression, when I walk in the room, what do I see? She's holding her chest and she's laying back and watching TV. Um, 
Next is level of consciousness. You use the anagram AVPU. Is Does she respond to audio? Uh, no. Yeah, audio response when I talk to her. Is it, no, that's verbal. Oh, is she alert? Is she alert and conscious and talking to me? Is she responding to vocal response? Is she, if she's not responding to either of those, is she responding to pain stimuli? And if she's not responding to those, she is an unresponsive patient. And last, chief complaint. She called the EMS because she had chest pain. So those are the first eight steps. The last four are you start your ABCs. This is where it gets complicated. These are vital signs and everything else. These are the ones I struggle with. So remembering number nine of the patient care report, we're getting into vitals. We're talking about the ABCs. Airway, is their airway open and unobstructed? Breathing, is it present? What is the quality of their respirations? What are their respiration rates? And what are their O2 saturations? If it's below 94, I need to be getting them, getting them on oxygen right away. If it's a nasal cannula, they get 0.5 mLs and I don't, per liter. I hope that's the right measurements. And if it's with a non-rebreather mask, it is 15 mLs and or it's 15 liters of oxygen. I think it's liters, I gotta look that up. So that's breathing. Circulation, is it present? Do they have a pulse on all of their extremities and their carotid pulse? Um, do they, circulation, is it present? Is it, what quality? Is it thready, strong, um, regular or irregular? And capillary refill of response. The reason they put the O2 meter on your finger with it pointing to your fingernail is that's called a capillary refill response. If you squeeze your fingernail, it should go right back to pink within two seconds. If it's not going right back to pink within two seconds, you're having diminished oxygen to your extremities. So that's why we measure all the way out here because it's the furthest place from your you know, instead of taking off your shoes and stuff, I guess you could do your feet, but they do it here because <laughs> it's furthest from your heart and your lungs and it's, yeah. Um, okay, so that's circulation. And then we go to skin. What is the color of the skin? Is it pink? Is it white? Is it pale? Is it blue? Um, what's the temperature? Is it cool and clammy? Is it warm and sweaty? Is it, uh, and then you do the dampness. Are they uh, diaphoric or are they non-diaphoric? Or adiaphoric, anti-diaphoric? Sweating or not sweating? <laughs> I hate that I have to know these words. And then I would um, assess for bleeding. Is there any bleeding? Control the bleeding. So I learned all about bleeding. That's a whole nother list of crap I gotta know. Then I'm gonna treat for shock if shock is present. And I'm gonna assess, is this a trauma? Does it need to go immediately? Or can we stay on the scene and treat a little bit longer before we load and go? So that's what I learned yesterday. Yes, it was that boring, but you gotta know it. It's how you pass the National Registry and become an EMT.